channel. This week's video is a, another instalment on my playlist about uh, schemas. If you haven't seen the other videos, I will link um, the playlist above now and I'll also put it in the description box below. I really suggest if you haven't gone and seen the very first video that gives you a big overview of what schemas are and why they're really useful for us parents to know about, um, go and watch that first and then come back and watch this one afterwards. So this week's video is all about the containment schema and containment schema is very simply about putting one thing inside of another and having an understanding of volume and capacity. So schemas as you will know from the very first video are about repeated patterns of behavior and by repeating these um, patterns of behavior we create a little folder in our brains um, that we can um, take out and use when we come across a situation that it is required. So you have been building on your containment schema for your entire life and that has led you to where you are now. And you are still using um, all of those things in that little folder about containment in your brain. So things like when you go out in your car and you're in the parking um, car parking spaces and you're trying to find a, a spot for your car and you might come across one and think, ah, there's a space and then you look at it and you think, oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to fit in there. Um, and that is where you've just taken out that folder about containment in your brain and you're using all of your previous knowledge, but in a very abstract way, to gauge whether your car, and you have got that kind of knowledge about your car and the size of that space, and you will be able to work out um, within your mind whether your car is going to fit, and that will be whether you decide to go for it and try and get your car in that space, or whether you carry on and find a bigger space. There probably isn't many times when you um, kind of just go for it, <laughs> scraping your car down the sides of the other two cars and thinking, oops, that didn't work. Um, and the reason that you don't need to do that is because you've built on all of this knowledge throughout your life um, to give you a really good understanding. Now, a child or a toddler um, isn't at that abstract stage yet because they haven't got that bank of experiences to draw upon. So they are doing the real physical aspects of containment. And that is what you will witness um, and see from your child and know that they're in the containment schema. So I'm gonna go through um, some things that you might see or activities that you could do with your child um, that supports the containment schema. Now, obviously, if I mention something that you've um, seen, um, that gives you an idea that your child is in the containment schema. But if you haven't seen it yet from your child, but you feel like they're in the containment schema, then that can be an activity that you um, support them with or have the resources out for them to try. So I'm going to go through a few activities and I'll insert some footage as well so that you can see these things in action. And I hope that will give you a good overview of the containment schema in general. So as I said, containment schema is all about putting um, one thing inside of another. And that also includes your toddler putting themselves inside other things. Um, and so the first thing um, that you can provide your child with is a range of different boxes that they can actually fit in. We get our fruit and vegetable delivered from um, a company that delivers them in these really lovely boxes. Um, and so I have one permanently in our play space. I've just cut a door into it. Um, and that allows us to get in and out um, fairly easily because it's a little bit too high for him to actually be able to climb up into. Um, and he uses that um, whenever he's um, exhibiting the containment schema. Um, there's actually times when he has been sat in the box with a smaller box putting an object inside of it. So it's like double containment. He's in a box and he's doing other things with boxes and it was really, really um, interesting to watch. So having a space in your either play area or in your house where you have on offer a range of different boxes. I just find it really fascinating when Oscar toddles off to the our little recycling area and takes out a box and attempts to get in it. And it's all just proving that he is, um, you know, trying to work out his size com in comparison to that box. It's really fascinating to watch. So yeah, so that's the first thing you can do. Have all these boxes available to your child. Um, not just when they're in the containment scheme, might I add. Um, have it there available for when um, they are. Because your child may be in the containment schema um, on one day for a period of time within that day. And then 
it might not um, appear again for a while and it might be because they've, they've mastered something that they feel they're okay with now and they've moved on to different things but they might come back at a later date and you may miss it even the best of us when we're observing our children um, may miss that they've entered into a schema so just having these things um, in your toy rotation on your shelves in your play space will allow your child to use the resources when they need them um, and this is also um, really crucial when you're thinking about toy rotation it's not just about having everything um, to do with one schema but also having things available that if they were to um, go into a different schema that they've got those resources available to them equally if you pick up on a schema you can just quickly grab things from the cupboard and bring them out. So boxes is a great one. The second one is having a range of containers and loose parts. Now this can be um, jars, um, saucepans, plastic containers from you know your Tupperware boxes, lunch boxes and things. Anything that you can put other things in. Um, and this is where it doesn't need to be about buying your child toys. It's just about providing them with things that you probably have all around your house or things that you can recycle. So. Um, Having these containers and a range of loose parts is really essential and, and comes into actually a lot of schemas, so it's a good one to have. We actually have um, these pouch lids that I get all of my um, friends to collect if they um, feed their children with um, those kind of puree pouches. So these are a great one for um, using into jars and containers. Um, and looking at capacity. Often this is one of those ones that they love pouring out and then restocking as well. So that's great for containment. Um, another activity um, when your child's in the containment schema is um, to provide them with a shape sorter. So I've got one on my shelf here. Um, it's not always out, but if I notice that Oscar is really um, exhibiting aspects of the containment schema, I'll just whip it out of the cupboard and um, have it there for him to use if he so wishes. Um, and as you might have seen in a previous video, if the shape sorter is too hard for your child, just limit the pieces. So I've only got four pieces out at the moment out of the six that is possible because those are the ones that um, give him the right level of challenge. Another thing that you can do or have available is to build forts or create tunnels or um, if you've got a tent or one of those um, teepees that are really in fashion at the moment, um, that's great for containment as well. So that's um, helping your child understand their size in comparison to other things, a bit like the box. Um, if you've got other children coming around for a play date, it's really fun to watch if they're also in the containment schema, how they you know, work out um, if two children are going in from both ends of the tunnel, are they gonna get through? Do they attempt to you know, shuffle past each other or does one get out? So all of those kind of things about containing themselves in different spaces is really useful. And you can have a big box of scarves available to your children and show them how to lay them over the back of two chairs to create a little den. Um, and Oscar really loves that and he'll go off and you know bring a scarf and, and attempt to kind of lay it over the chairs now. Other things you can do um, is um, some kind of messy play or, or what people call dry play. So things like pasta, rice or sand and provide those things with a range of other containers that they can fill and empty. So Oscar really likes um, when I get the pasta out, I provide him with a lot of different containers and he will sit for quite a while taking one piece of pasta and putting it into um, the containers that are available. And you'd think, yeah, that's not a fun activity, but if they're in the containment schema, that is exactly what they're, you know, that, that urge is to do. So having those um, resources available, so a box of sand, a box of rice, a box of pasta, they'll last you for ages um, and um, you can use them with a range of different containers for the containment schema. And then finally, another activity you can do is um, in the bath. And often people ask me about what activities we do in the bath and it all depends. And just like our shelf, it's on rotation. But having um, a jug or various containers in the bath that they can fill with water is really, really good for the containment schema. So essentially, if you are thinking about what do I need um, when my child's in the containment schema, it is range of containers from boxes or jars or um, plastic containers and loose parts that they can use to go into those containers 
or things like pasta and sand or water. Um, so it's not about necessarily buying lots of toys. I think the only thing that I've mentioned that is a specific toy is probably the shape sorter, um, which you might have already. Um, and then finally, when we're thinking about containment schema, it's really important to think about the language that um, we want to reinforce when our child is in the containment schema so that they're able to um, articulate if they're at that talking stage, um, what they're going through and help them build their vocabulary. So things like in and out become very important or inside and outside and fill and empty as well are all great words to um, reinforce with your child and keep repeating as they are going through these activities. So um, that's the containment schema in um, a nutshell and I hope that's given you some ideas of things that you can provide for your child if you feel that they are in the containment schema. I really want to stress at this point that um, you don't need to sit down and force your child to do any of these activities. It's more about having them, having these resources out and available to them and then they are able to explore and use them in a way that they feel um, supports their schema. So I hope that has given you a um, good idea and um, some more ideas, a good idea and some more ideas, <laughs> a good idea about things you can do with your child and um, I hope to see you again soon. Bye.